Hey guys, Pastor Mike here, Connection Christian Church. Thanks for checking us out online. You know, with everything going on in our world today, we are so grateful that we have the type of media that we do and that we can offer the kind of content that we do. So if you'd like to check out one of our many messages or devotional series, you can do so at ConnectionChristianChurch.com. You can also access them through YouTube or our Facebook page. And then if you are uh, willing, we also have a Connection Christian Church app. Just go to the, the App Store, download uh, Tithely Church app, type in our name, and you can bring up that, and it'll have lots of content in there for you as well. And thanks so much for tuning into today's message. I hope that something that we share today encourages you in your, your faith or supports you in your challenges, helps you to grow in your faith, or maybe even just challenges some of your preconceived notions. Something in it would light a fire for you. Now, we don't want this online content, as great as it is, to ever be used in place of the church. The church is a body of people, not a one-hour service on a Sunday. And so if you can, we would encourage you to engage in a small group ministry, even if it's over Zoom or other technology, that you would find a way to be with God's people. As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And we believe wholeheartedly uh, in the ability of God's people to love on and encourage and support each other uh, through difficult times and to help really help us in our faith to become more and more like Jesus. And so we would encourage you, uh, if this is your first time uh, checking us out, that you can also check us out in person. We are doing a number of things right now uh, with requiring masks, as is the, the mandate in the city of Columbus, but we're also spreading out six feet apart, uh, making sure that we sanitize everything. So trying to provide a safe, clean, healthy environment for you and your family to join us in person. If that's simply not an option for you, then by all means, continue to watch us online. We wanna be here for you, and we're so glad that we can serve you in this way. Thanks for again for joining us today. I hope you enjoy the message. Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Danny. I am the uh, admin pastor here at Connection. Um, not a paid role. I'm a complete volunteer. I put in about five, ten hours a week here at the church, uh, help get some administrative uh, things on task. That's kind of what I do. Uh, Merry Christmas, and uh, yeah, good to have some interaction today. Uh, we are actually going to be continuing a series called uh, "This Is the Way," and this is the way is loosely based off of the Mandalorian. Now, I don't watch a ton of TV. In fact, I've been on uh, paternity leave for the last uh, four and a half weeks because my daughter Kira was born on uh, November 18th. So I have watched more TV in the past five and a half weeks than I think I have in the last five and a half years. And it's been kind of fun. Uh, one show that I forgot to catch up on, though, was The Mandalorian. And uh, I, I don't know why that was. Like, I, there was other shows, I think, that were a little more up my alley. But I do like Star Wars, and I was... On Facebook and I saw that it got spoiled so I went ahead and watched like the final episode and now I want to rewatch the whole thing knowing what I know if you haven't watched it yet I, I highly highly encourage it but the Mandalorians were guys who uh, were, were bounty hunters and they, they have this code of conduct and whenever they are referring to that they say this is the way so we all have a code of conduct that we abide by whether that's our job Show up to work on time or you're going to get fired. Whether that's in school, do your homework or you're going to get a note sent home. Hide that note from mom and dad and you'll even get in more trouble so you break all the rules. Not that I've ever dealt with that. But we all have these, these codes that we live by. So Thursday night, Mike talked about what it means to find your way to Jesus and what that looks like. And that's going to look different for everybody. Now, I'm going to talk about a time where I got in my own way. So, I used to be a, a youth intern at a, a Lutheran church in Bellevue that was rather large, about a thousand-person church. And uh, 
Every year they took their youth group kids on a mission trip to uh, wherever, and we um, were in Minneapolis this year. And I don't know Minneapolis all that well. Uh, They told us where to meet. There's this church in the inner city, not exactly the best neighborhood. We go in there, and they set all of us leaders down. And they say, okay, this isn't the safest neighborhood. Here is a binder. And this binder has everything you need to know for the entire week. It's going to have where you're going, who you're going to be working with, directions to and from every place you need to go. Keep this on you. It's the second most important book to the Bible. You need to keep it with you. So I ended up, for some reason, I had the binder. And we were assigned to go to a soup kitchen about 17 minutes away in St. Paul to go serve that night. And I grabbed the directions to there. I was reviewing them over. And instead of putting the directions back in the binder, I slid them in my pocket. It was time to go. I was like, okay, I got my wallet, my keys, my cell phone. And I I had this directions. It's directions there. Not the directions back. So we got up to this uh, church to uh, serve, uh, you know, in the soup kitchen. Kids are behaved, everything's fine, everything's good. Had a good time, and it was time to go home. And I thought, well, I'm missing something. And I realized, like, I have the directions there, but I don't have them back. So, like, okay, no no big deal, you know, I could just read the directions backwards. So I'm reading them, and I'm looking like, okay, how is this going to work? And I'm trying to channel my inner Magellan or Christopher Columbus or something. And I'm like, okay, I got this. So I start driving, and I, I just follow the directions, the opposite of what was there. And what I realized was, pretty soon, I'm like, that, that target there doesn't look familiar. I, I don't remember passing that exact Panera bread. Um, okay, I, I might not be in this area, but I don't know this area. I'm just following the directions. Before I know it, like, there's no more city, and there's no exits. I'm like, okay, what direction am I going? I have no idea. And I didn't want to seem like I was lost because then I'd have to admit to the students that I was there that I had completely failed at the one thing I was told to do, which is to keep the binder with me. And the cell phone I had at the time wasn't a smartphone. It was one of those, like, it wasn't a flip phone either. It was one of those that had, like, a slide-out keyboard with a small screen. You know what I'm talking about? Okay. And that thing had a really bad battery life, and it died. So I'm trying to find the nearest exit, and I, and I pull off, and there's a McDonald's. And I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to stop at this McDonald's. I'm going I'm to have to buy my students some supper because they're probably hungry and explain to them what an utter failure of an intern that I am. And uh, I, I roll in, and I ask somebody, like, hey, can I have a charger? I bought some, some dinner, and this guy at the, at the restaurant was like, hey, Uh, you you seem lost. I'm like, yeah, can I get on your laptop for a minute? I'm going to see if I can find directions, and I'm going to send my uh, youth director a message, you know, explaining to him why I'm late. So I ended up uh, sending him that. I ended up, uh, he kind of talked me through how to get back. I went on a map quest on the guy's computer, and eventually, about two hours later, we're back. I got in my own way. You see, when we were leaving, I kind of knew that I didn't have the binder on me. And I thought for a second, I should really go in and get that. But I thought, yeah, if I do that, then I'm going to look irresponsible. I'm going to have to make a call at somebody, and then they're going to be like, hey, I told you, don't ever leave this book. Don't ever go without it. Well, (laughs) sure enough, I I get back, and um, I, I didn't get chewed out. I, I didn't get fired or anything, although I didn't get the full-time job I applied for there, but that's okay. Um, it really reminds us of how sometimes when we're trying to lead others to Christ, that sometimes we, we get in the way. I'm going to talk about this morning how we can clear the way so that way we can come to know Christ, we can, let, we can make Christ known to others. So, We sing a lot of Christmas songs today, and uh, it is a season, right? So I'm going to go ahead and talk about the very first Christmas song in the Bible, and that's going to be in Luke chapter 1. Now, Luke chapter 1 talks a lot about a lot of different 
birth announcements. So, there was the birth announcement of the angel Gabriel to Zechariah about John the Baptist. Now, the angel Gabriel appears to John the Baptist in this story and tells him that his wife, who is of, you know, very advanced age, is going to give birth to a son, and he is to call him John. Zechariah doubted it. Gabriel said, hey, I'm Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. I know what I'm talking about. And then also took away Zechariah's uh, ability to speak. Now, I have gone through four pregnancies with my wife. I'm pretty sure there'd be some times right there where she would have wished God would stricken me of my voice. But he didn't. Sorry. And then we also hear of another birth announcement of the angel Gabriel to Mary. And in that moment, Mary accepts the will of God to be a vessel to carry Jesus into a lost and broken world. So Mary goes to meet Elizabeth. Um, I'm not sure really why. I I mean, I'm sure that Elizabeth probably needed the company seeing as her husband couldn't talk. But she walks in the room. And all of a sudden, the the baby in Elizabeth's womb, who's later known as John the Baptist, leapt for joy at the announcement. And in Luke chapter 1, verse 46, Mary says, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked on the humble estate of his servant. For behold, from now on all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, And holy is his name. This was a testimony. This was, Elizabeth knew there's something going on, there's something different, and and Mary automatically gives credit where credit's due. Now, I don't know about you, but I know a lot of us have gone through a lot of life change. We were in a bad spot. We're now in a good spot. We had some really bad habits, just some really bad things that we regret, but now we're in this good spot. And sometimes people wonder, like, what's different about you? What's changed about you? And sometimes as Christians, we kind of drop the ball. We get in the way when we say things like, oh, you know, I I changed this habit. I went on this diet. I quit this uh, addiction. I quit that. And, And we fail to give credit where credit's due. That's what Mary did. She gave credit where credit was due. She said, behold, God has done great things for me. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. So when you're around somebody and they notice something different, you say, yeah, it's God. I, I talk a lot about spiritual gifts and, and serving the body, and, and I've always, I kind of feel like a broken record on this because i said it a million times. But you can debate philosophy with somebody all day long. You can talk about apologetics, and that's all great. But you can't argue with a story. You can't argue with somebody needing Jesus, because we just need him. There's, there's no arguing that. So that's the first one point was to magnify the way. Mary says that my soul magnifies the Lord. It means that we make him, we know God's big, but sometimes we make him look small. So we need to make him big in our lives so that way others can know and fall in love with him as well. Other person we're going to talk about this morning is John the Baptist. And so, Mary stays with Elizabeth for a few months. And right before Elizabeth gives birth, Mary leaves. Elizabeth gives birth, and all of a sudden, uh, Zechariah gets his, his speech back the moment the baby's born. And he says, yeah, the baby's supposed to be called John. And then, we don't hear a lot for the next 30 or so years. John turned out to be this guy who was kind of weird. He wore like these like, like fur, like weird camel skins. And the man just like stood in water and was like just preaching to people. He ate locusts. He was just a, a strange guy. And he was calling people to repentance. He was calling people to a baptism of repentance. So he was preaching to people. And the Jewish people who had never even thought about the idea that they needed to be cleaned up and repent, they, they're up there and they're repenting and they're getting washed, their sins are getting washed away. 
in baptism. And I was foretold in the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, starting in verse 3. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Now, John the Baptist was making a straight highway for the Lord. And I know sometimes, we live in Nebraska, right? There's a lot of uh, road work that happens in this state. Going to Omaha, it's, it's, it's crazy. There's a lot of stuff that kind of gets in the way. And for us, we kind of get in the way too sometimes. We are supposed to reach a lost and hurting world for Jesus. And sometimes I think we, we do things that kind of get in the way. Sometimes it's being a little judgmental. Sometimes we make people feel like they can't walk through the doors of this church. And let me tell you something, anybody can walk through the doors of this church. We love everybody. You know, we talk about removing obstacles. Right now we're in a, in a global pandemic. We're still there. I don't know how much for launch longer, but we're still there. And so some people aren't comfortable coming into a building like this. That's okay. We got the online covered. We have a lot of content on our website that, that preaches God's word. So if people aren't feeling safe, they can do that. They can watch from home. They can even watch from home if they're just not ready to walk into an actual building like this. That's okay. We meet people where they're at. So, my question for you is what's your next step? We have lots of different opportunities that we can, we can jump in today. For some of us, we might not know who this Jesus is. We might not have had a relationship with him yet. And I want, if that's you today, come and talk to us. Talk to us about the barriers that we've put up. Help us. So that way we realize when we make mistakes, we can take away those, those barriers and those walls to Jesus. Maybe this morning, you realize that God's done a lot of great things in your life. And you've never really given God credit. And you've never told your story. Everybody has a story. That story can help people. So maybe, maybe it's realizing like, what God's done for you and then, then share that with somebody this week. Maybe you aren't connected yet. Maybe you're in a sit in a seat on Sundays, and that's kind of where it ends. I know for me, one of the, the barriers that always got in the way of me finding a church was, uh, was child care. I have, now I have four kids under the age of 10, and sitting with them in church was always a struggle. I think it's awesome that we all have them in the room today, and uh, from what I could tell, all my kids at least are behaving, and <laughs> seems great. Um, but when I first came to Connection, Man, I was not at a good spot. I wasn't. Two years ago, three years ago, I was a, just a complete and total mess. Life was hanging on by a string. And my son asked me if we could go to his friend's church. I said, okay, what, what, which church is that? I look it up. All right. First thing I looked for before I saw anything, do they have a kid's program? So I could please, while my wife was at work, have some place to put my at the time, almost two-year-old daughter. So I need some peace of quiet because, yeah, this guy's had a lot. So I drop her off at kids' church. And for the first time in years, I felt the peace that this church provided. That was a barrier because I didn't want to have them be distracted. And over time, we, we got connected and plugged into a community and really start to see God work in our marriage and in our family. 
And those are the great things that God did for me here. So what's he doing for you? Let's pray. God, I thank you for this morning and all the good you've done in my life. That, Lord, you have done mighty works. Lord, I pray that we would bring Jesus into every corner of this world and our communities and our sphere of influence. God, I thank you for everything you've done. And help us to remember you're the reason for this season. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining us again for today's message. As I said before, you can check out our many messages online at ConnectionChristianChurch.com. Visit our YouTube page or Facebook. You can also download that app in the App Store. If you have any questions about that, just simply post a comment below and we will do our best to get back to you. Uh, check out the, the website. There's tons of content out there. Great information. If you want more information about uh, Connection Christian Church or about taking the next steps with your faith, and by all means, click on those links that we post in the video. It helps us to know that you're watching. It helps us know what changes uh, God is bringing about in your life, and we want to join you on that faith journey journey. If you would like to give to the ministry of Connection Christian Church, and we would, by all means, we would encourage you to do so. It's a great way to let God know that he's number one in your life, and that it's a great way to support us in the mission that he has set us out on. And so you can do so uh, by going to ConnectionChristianChurch.com and click on that donate button. You can also uh, find that link here uh, in the comments section of the video, and uh, you can do it uh, through our app as well. So many different ways that you can contribute online you can even set that up to reoccurring and uh, and be able to bless uh, the the ministry at connection Christian Church that way guys we love you and we appreciate you have a great day